Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 820 of the Juicebox Podcast. In today's episode, Jenny Smith and I will be talking about the math behind figuring out a basal rate. While you're listening today, please remember a few things. First, nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. Remember this as well. This is episode 820, episode 821, and episode 822 go together with this one. You're going to learn about basal in this episode. In episode 821, we're going to talk about insulin to carb ratios and how to get them set up. And then in the last episode, insulin sensitivity. These three settings are huge and will help you in every aspect of your diabetes care. Listen to the end of all three episodes for hints about what other episodes of the podcast will build on what you've heard today. If you're a U.S. resident who has type 1 or is the caregiver of someone with type 1, please head to t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box and fill out the survey completely. When you do, you're helping to move type 1 diabetes research forward without ever leaving your home. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Today's episode of the Juice Box Podcast is also sponsored by Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 and Dexcom G7 continuous glucose monitors. Get started today, learn more, or see if you're eligible for a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6 at Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. I've been asked, can you just tell me what the math is for setting up mm. my basal insulin, for setting up my insulin to carb ratio for setting up my insulin sensitivity. And I don't know why we've just never gotten around to it, probably because I have an aversion to math. But as uh, you pointed out right before we started recording, yes, there's math here, but there's also other things to understand. So right. And I, you know, I think as I said before, it is it's a lot to do with the fact that outside of the newer people on insulin, um. I think many people just end up tweaking from where they're currently at. And once they've started learning more about how to adjust their overall insulin, unless they really are the more, I guess, precise for lack of a better word, I just want to know why I need this much insulin and how to adjust it with a math equation. Many people just Ah, it looks like I need a little more. I'll add a little more here. <laughs> it looks like I need a little bit less. I'll take a little bit away. And there's not much math that they're considering. Mm -hmm. They're just adjusting, right? Yeah. And they also don't know where to start sometimes, like where to begin. True. Because we all leave a doctor's office with, I guess my assumption is the doctor uses these equations to come up with something for you to get you started to get you close enough, right? A baseline, yes. But yeah. nobody's telling you that when you're leaving the office. They're not They're not saying to you, hey, I made your basal 0.8 an hour because, you know, what we're going to talk about now. Yes, um, absolutely. But but then you get home and it works or it doesn't work. If you come, up, if you come along this podcast, you're going to hear an episode about setting basal insulin that's, you know, basically me saying <laughs> use a little more if you're your blood sugar has been high and use a little less in these situations where and you come along and clarify a little bit. And um, but people are asking for like, where do I really start? So mm -hmm. I guess going to basal first, how does your basal insulin get set on day one? You just were diagnosed and you're sitting in the office and someone's giving you either an amount to inject or an amount to put into your pump, probably to inject, right? So where does that right. come from? Well, in in initially it will come from just weight, your body, your body weight, weight. Okay. truly just your body weight. And um, some doctors do a 50-50. They calculate total insulin estimated need based on your body weight. And then they'll say, okay, well, 50% of this or so should come from your basal and the other 50% should come from your bolus insulin. And so they work out the math that way, okay. right? Um, and in general, some some may set you up 
by actually asking a little bit more. Are you a really active person? Are you a really sedentary person? What is your age? You know, um, as you go through different stages of your life, your insulin needs will shift and change. You may be more insulin sensitive. You may be more insulin resistant at certain points in time. Um, so if they're doing a really awesome job for you in estimating this initial dosing, besides your weight, they may also factor in um, your activity level, okay. right? Um, and then in terms of the life, right, the stage of life that you're in, you may be in need of more insulin or less insulin just based on your age, mm -hmm. right? So a certain amount of total insulin goes in based on whether you're five years old versus 65 mm -hmm. years old yeah. in general. See, see, already, this is – this for people listening, this is why there's not just a – here's the math of setting your basal insulin because – there's so much that goes into it. Uh, you know, you just said, depending on your age, it's also a lot of that is where you are in your life. People might not understand that, you know, once you get past the the honeymoon stage and your basal need or your, excuse me, your insulin needs are, are pretty stabilized. Right. As a young person, they might be very stable right up until, you know, you get to uh, where you're starting to see hormones in your life. And then that goes crazy. And then your hormones might stabilize. But some of you, for some of you, it might not. Like some women might struggle with hormonal problems, you know, for decades where there's a lot of fluctuation. And then, Correct. you know, it's just there's so much happening. And in terms of the, you know, the direct math, I guess a good example is that <clears throat> much of much of medical math is based on kilogram weight. And here in the U.S., we use pounds, mm -hmm. right? So to find your weight in kilograms, all you really have to do is take your weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2. Okay. And then you have your weight in kilograms. Okay. I won't make you figure out your weight in kilograms for everybody I'm to not, know. So. I'm not telling anybody my weight. I'm going to just take 100 <laughs> pounds <laughs> in, in kilograms so I have somewhere to go from. So it's, you might be like a, a, a middle schooler, let's say, if you're 100 pounds, mm -hmm. give or take, right? That's just an estimate. So you divide that by 2.2. So the, a 100-pound person of some age is about 45 kilograms, Okay. right? And so if you're figuring out – let's say you've got – um a 45 kilogram or 100 pound kid, mm -hmm. right? If they are inactive, that kid could have insulin needs, total daily insulin needs of anywhere between like 0.6 to like 1, 1 1.2 per units per kilogram. Okay. Right? So, I mean, and that's a big range, right? That's a big range. Do you need 0.6 units per kilogram if you're 45 kilograms or all the way up to like one unit per kilogram? Mm -hmm. And again, this is total daily dose. This is both basal and bolus. So, together. Right? So, together. So, so I've gotten out a calculator. So your example, 0.6 would then be times 45 kilograms, which would Correct. be at 27 units a day. Total. Exactly. To and this is for an inactive, right? right? This is like an inactive kid, right? Right. If you have the kid who is entirely like, I do two hours of soccer four times a week and then a tournament every weekend, that's like four. You got a busy kid. Mm -hmm. So anytime activity level, most often, I should say, anytime activity level goes up, you're metabolically um, using food better. Your body is responding better from the muscle level to mm -hmm. the insulin doses. So your insulin sensitivity is going to increase, which means that your doses decrease. Yeah. Right? Oh, right. So a really, really heavily active kid, same weight is, you know, going to need somewhere, let's say between 0.4 to 0.8. Okay. So interesting because we said half of it, right? At 0. 0.6 for the inactive kid, you're at 27, but at one, you're 45. For that inactive kid. So you could be somewhere between 27 total units a day split between basal and bolus and 45 for the inactive 100 pounder. But for a more active one, you're saying more like 0. 0.4. Right. right to times about 45. 0. 0.8. Yeah. So that goes from like 18 to. Sorry, I'm clicking. Remember? You're doing the math. Yeah, yes. to 36. I just don't want to get it I wrong. I should have got my calculator out for you. That I could have done it. <laughs> I, I just realized I don't own a calculator, so I like the computer has one. But um, <laughs> but I didn't want to, like, I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong numbers over and over again. And people be like, oh, so there's a huge swing. Like There like, is. So on the, on the high end for that active 100 pounder, you're at like 36. But on the high end for an inactive person, you could be up to as much as 
45. 45. It's a lot more right. insulin. Right. Yeah, okay. So, and then it changes based on stage in life, right? Then we've mm-hmm. got adolescence, then we've got like more like adult age, and then we've also got older adults, yeah. right? Um, so, so you can see where the math isn't a direct, if you're this age or this weight specifically, you're just going to need this amount of insulin. And I hear that question often when I work with people. And also I see that question come up a lot in all of the online communities. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, how, you know, my, my kid is seven years old. How much insulin does your seven year old use? That's, that's not purposeful. Right. Right. That's not going to help you figure out your seven year old's insulin needs. Yeah. It's not. not. Also, we just use the example of activity, but You could also use another variable and say, you know, I don't know, what if in the household, uh, here's one, what if there's somebody in the household who has celiac and you're using gluten-free, which oftentimes has more carbs in it, you could be in a carbier situation. What if you're somebody who stops at McDonald's four times a week versus somebody who's, you know, having salads and, you know, uh, a small piece of chicken with, you know, like that kind of thing. Correct. Right. 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 Absolutely. So then you're going to, again, from a comparison standpoint, you're looking at total insulin in a known situation of very different intake of food, maybe activity level. And also then the insulin doses are going to be very, very different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So comparison wise, again, that's why I think that this is important to know, like, where did the math come from? Where is a good place that if you're trying to redo things, it could be a starting point. Um, I mean, there are certainly, could you Google it? You certainly could, but I think you're going to get a lot less directive information. There are a couple of really good books that have charts and everything already set for you to read and manually sort of figure it out. Um, I mean, John Walsh's pumping insulin book is a really good reference The think like a pancreas book. Um, they're, yeah. they're awesome in terms of like, this is the math. This is how to sit down and figure it out if you really wanted to. Right. But sometimes I think it's nice to have somebody sort of walk you through it yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Instead of looking at the graph and thinking, I want to do something wrong here. And, right. And come up because right. that that's got to be someone's fear is that I'm going to do I'm gonna, I'm going to do my gazintas and then I'm going to use way <laughs> too, way too much insulin and right. You know, right. Yeah. So, and I I think that actually brings up a, a good point actually that especially for those newer diagnosed who may be questioning the math and or seeing shifts in their insulin need already and mm-hmm. wondering well my doctor is telling me to shift it this way most often they're they're erring on the side of caution and shifting your insulin yeah. for you, right? So you may be seeing numbers that aren't necessarily where you really would like them to be or where you've learned that many people are getting their numbers to be. Mm-hmm. They're erring, you know, clinically, they're erring on the side of the lower amount before they get some data to show that they can increase safely. Right. Because imagine if you are using 0.6 an hour, let's do that for people, 0.6 times 24, say you're on a pump or Mm -hmm. or you're shooting it, I guess. So 0.6 an hour, if you're pumping, or it would be 14 and a half units a day if you were shooting it. And that's just basal. And that's just basal we're talking about for a second. But you, let's say it should be a unit, but instead it's 0.6. So you should have 24, but you're using 14 and then your blood sugars are high and your meals are spiking and you start and not seeing, coming down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you start seeing ghosts, which I talk about a lot. Like, you know, if, if my example here would be if the doctor told you, look, your basil's 0. 0.6, but really mm-hmm. it should be one. Now you're deficient 0. 0.4 an hour of basil. Then you come along and bolus something. Your blood sugar goes up and you think, oh, my insulin to carb ratio is wrong. But it might not be. Your insulin to carb ratio might be right. Your basal insulin's wrong. And right. And for every unit you're shooting for food, 0.4 of it is really kind of just going to cover lost basil because your settings right. are wrong. Right. Correct. Yeah. So from a from a basil only standpoint, if you you know, that initial equation was really for figuring what on average should my total daily truly be. Mm-hmm. Daily being everything. Basil, boluses, corrections, everything in the mix. If you really just want the math, um, for doing kind of same example, like a young inactive kid, just basal dosing is going to be somewhere around 0.2, 0.25, upwards of maybe Mm -hmm. 0.6. Again, per kilogram 
of body weight. So that'll break it down a little bit further so that you can just say, okay, my kid's getting this much. They're about in that bracket. They're not very active. This is about right. Mm -hmm. If, however, like you just said, you're constantly noticing, well, gosh, we never really get down despite all the work that we're doing. And you plug in the equation, you're like, well, gosh, maybe we're deficient in basal. (laughs) You know, the equation is here. We're kind of under that by a unit or two. Well, maybe you could nudge it up a little bit and then be able to see whether that's working. Yeah. What if I'm a 200 pound grown person? (laughs) <laughs> right and and yeah. I and I got diagnosed yesterday and I'm six three or whatever. And are you are you pretty active or are you just moderately active or are you just kind of the couch potato? What would you like to be? Givo Kypo Pen has no visible needle and is a premixed auto injector of glucagon for treatment of very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages two and above. Find out more. Go to gvoglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit gvoglucagon.com slash risk. You can make knowledge your superpower with a Dexcom CGM. The Dexcom G6 can help you to make better diabetes treatment and management decisions. The Dexcom lets you see your glucose numbers or your child's glucose numbers with just a quick glance at your smart device or Dexcom receiver. Get alerted when your glucose levels are heading high or low and share your data with up to 10 followers. The Dexcom G6 is covered by most insurance plans, so why don't you head over now to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box to get started with the Dexcom. While you're there, you may be offered a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6. If you get that offer, I'd try it if I was you. Free 10 days. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I'm looking at my daughter's blood sugar right now. It's 70. We're about to eat, and her blood sugar feels like it's in a good place. This data we have right now, this visual of what her blood sugar's been doing all day and in the last 30 minutes and whatever else you want to look at, it's going to help us to make a great bolus for a meal and to watch for spikes, lows, and everything else. The Dexcom is going to give you alarms wherever you want them to be at. Ours go off at 70 and 120. Yours may be somewhere different. You decide how to set up your Dexcom. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. You will not make a better decision today than going to that link. There are links in the show notes of the podcast player you're listening in right now and links at juiceboxpodcast.com to Dexcom, Givo Kypo Pen, and all of the sponsors. When you click on one of my links, you're helping to support the show and to keep it plentiful and free for its listeners. So if you're going to get this stuff, just please give us give us a little click click on those links. Kind of the couch potato, what would you like to be? This feels like an attack, Jenny. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, no, I mean, how about just a, how about a person who gets up in the morning and goes to a job and probably gets around 8,000 steps a day and, you know, Gets to the gym okay. twice a week, you know, that twice kind of a week. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, I would call that at least mild to moderately active. Honestly, you're getting a good a number of steps more mm-hmm. than just the daily activity of 5000. Right? right. So, again, an adult fully grown, no more growth hormone kind of stuff happening somewhere between 0.2 to 0.5 per kilogram of body weight. And that's just basal. Okay. So I could be somewhere 0.2 times 90 kilograms. I already did the kilogram math. Ah, you did the weight. Thank you. 18. It's up to 0.5 times the 90, 45. Mm -hmm. And that's a total daily insulin. No, that's just basal. No, excuse me, basal, excuse me. Yep, that's just basal. Literally looking at the word basal six times in front of me and said the wrong (laughs) thing. Uh, So again, there's a big swing, right? At 45 It's, you know, I imagine always like parents thinking about 45 units in a syringe and they're probably just like, wait, what? (laughs) Right. Well, many, many people in a syringe now may actually only have the 30 cc or the 30 unit syringes. Mm -hmm. So they may think, well, gosh, my syringe doesn't even go up to the amount of insulin I need to take at one time. Right. Yeah. I just did the math there for the for the larger amount. 
And even in a pump split up over, you know, 24 separate hours, it's 1.8 an hour. Correct. Right. So, Which could be, I mean, when you talk about like, that seems like a lot, but gosh, if you look at, um, what do you think the heaviest age group for insulin needs is? My guess. Oh gosh. What is my, what do I think the heaviest group is? Girls who get their periods in the beginning. I don't know. 15, or, 14, 13. Or, yeah. Adolescence, right? Adolescence, that okay. teen, preteen, upwards into maybe even early college, mm -hmm. right? And really their needs in an in inactive state or let's call it moderately active. I don't even know what moderately active is for a teen these days. <laughs> it's like, it's, what are you doing? It's swiping. <laughs> it's your finger moving very quickly up it's, and down. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So really inactive, let's say somewhere between, for adolescents, somewhere between 0.3 and point about one-ish. Mm -hmm. If you're moderately active, like you go to gym a couple of times a week or PE, right? Um, you may bike down to the mall or whatever with your friends. I don't, again, yeah. so far so, outside of that age range, but it's like 0.3 to like 0.7 with some activity. So you can see that the more active you get, the lower overall your insulin needs will be because you're metabolically able to be more sensitive to using and your body using, seeing and responding to insulin right. better. It, to give a little focus for people, like that's why if you are a person who's moderately active, and mm -hmm. you have all your insulin set well, and then you decide on Saturday afternoon you're going to go play basketball, and an hour into it, you're looking at a stranger going, there's juice in my bag. Like, <laughs> right. right, yes. <laughs> I have to, help me. Uh, that's going to be because you were set up as an in, a more inactive person who suddenly got very active, and your settings, yeah. you didn't change your settings to go play basketball. Um, Correct. So, and, and I think that brings in and of itself a really good point. Like, if you went and did that like once a week, you're most likely still going to be only moderately active. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and your insulin needs for that day may shift. Yeah. Or maybe into the next day, maybe 36, even 48 hours of reaping the benefit of that high activity. But that doesn't mean your overall settings need to be adjusted. Right. Yeah. That's applying another factor. Right. Right. That's just a point of, you know, what stable can look like right until you throw a variable into the mix. So, right. So, but over time, if you added more consistently, like you joined, you know, the basketball team and you're practicing a couple of nights a week and you're doing that like rec league or whatever on the weekends or tournaments. Now, over time, you're needs. metabolically going to become more sensitive. Right. Your insulin needs may come down. And I see that with a lot of the teens that I work with, you know, in the season versus the off season, shifts in need can happen in a very considerable way. Okay. So to make this episode valuable for anybody who trips over it, whether they <laughs> have a kid, I don't know. Like also, does this count when you're honeymooning? Nothing counts when you're honeymooning, right? Yeah. <laughs> does it does it count? I think from an from a place of analysis, you could see where are you and as you become more sensitive because your body is still helping you or has increased it, the help that it's giving you in that time period, then some of this math may definitely go out the window. I mean, we've had, you know, many kiddos who can just use a basal insulin of one unit a day and they're not even bolusing. Yeah. Right. So then, uh, yes, so then as this needs, math may, may right. not be helpful. But as needs shift, you can redo the math and then look at the range and and say, oh, well, I'm already at the low part of the range. It doesn't seem to be enough. And you can see at least where, at least, I guess my point is, if you're at 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5 is not working, but you know your range based on the math might be 0. 0.5 to, I don't know, one, then at least you, because some people are like, I don't know how far to turn it. Like, I want right. to give more, right? But I don't know. Is it 0. 0.5 to three? No, it's not. Y right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. right. Yes. No, and no, no, no. <laughs> it, it's hard to put yourself back into the position of a person who has no earthly idea what they're talking about, you know, because it's hard to know where to go. Yes. Uh, but okay, so maybe you're honeymooning and you'll be on the on the cautious side. You'll see your needs change. You'll do the math and you'll adjust within the range. But but is this, ad is this episode good for somebody, whether they're eight or or, and just found the podcast, I've had diabetes for two years, where they're 15 or they're 35 or they're 60, like does yes. it, it works for everybody. 
Yes. That's it. Okay. Say it one more time for me. Just the math. Just the math. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we just went Which the part? Thing. The total daily dose or just the basal? Start over, Jenny. I walk into the room. I'm like, Jennifer, I need your help setting my basal insulin. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm 30 years old. I weigh 180 pounds. What do I do? Yeah. So 180 pounds. I'm sure you probably all did already did the math on your fancy computer. 81 and a half kilograms. So you're 81 and a half kilograms. Mm -hmm. And we're going to essentially take that. You said you're 30 years old, right? We're going to take 81 and your age is 30. And Scott, how active are you? I have to be honest, Jenny. I've been watching. (laughs) I've been watching Battlestar Galactica. On sci-fi, I'm I'm into uh, I'm into season five, and I'm going right from that to Yellowstone. So I'm not doing much. I'm sitting around. And you, and on your side time, you're doing a podcast, right? Yes, I sit when I work, <laughs> and I sit when I'm enjoying myself. And um, I eat I eat well though. I don't eat a lot. Okay. Of, I don't eat a lot of junk food. I don't have any okay. Jenny. I don't have any processed oils. I stay away from processed food. I eat okay. uh, protein, not a ton of carbs. Maybe okay. candy once in a while. Okay, right. so you're overall inactive, age-wise, kind of where is a, a nice age to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're really looking at taking your kilogram weight, mm-hmm. 81 kilograms, and you're going to multiply that. If we want to start with just a total daily sort of estimate of where your insulin needs to be, in an inactive adult, you're looking at about 0.5 to about 1.2, 0.5, okay. 0.6, up to about 1.2. Um, units per kilogram. And again, this is your total insulin need in a day. Mm-hmm. So I'm at 40, wit- 40 and a half okay. at, point, at point 0.5. Of, of which about about half, give or take again, based on an inactive level is going to be basal. Okay. Now, if you really want, you know, dosing strategy just for basal, and then when we talk again, we can see how well that's working for you. Mm -hmm. Then we'd kind of start with just looking at basal insulin needs. And from, an again, inactive adult, um, got to get to doing more than Battlestar Galactica or whatever it was. (laughs) Well, I'm thinking about going for a walk. (laughs) <laughs> You're thinking about going for a walk. Okay. So that would add in some mild activity, mm-hmm. but I would still start you on, you know, somewhere between 0.25 all the way up to maybe 0.6 units per kilogram. And this is going to be just your basal insulin need. So if okay. we took, let's say, say middle ground in between there, 0.4 units. Okay. So you take your 81 kilograms times 0.4 gives you about 32, 32.7, so let's say 33 units of just basal insulin a day. Okay. All right. And okay. so if I'm shooting it, I'm shooting that much. Does it matter if I'm shooting Traceba or Lantus? Or is, no? Okay. No. Nope. And if I'm on a pump, I'm going to divide that number by 24 and make my basal rate about 1.35 an hour. Yes. Good math. Thank Absolutely. You. Okay. Uh, but- so is the chart really the important part? Like, I know you mentioned that they're in a couple of books. Like, they are. So I'm putting, like, put yourself in the, like, this episode will be downloaded just tens of thousands of times. And it's going to be by everybody and every age. And they're going to hear it overall. But where do, so where do they go to start? So now I can't tell you how much they weigh or how old they are, but what should they do? Right. I think, honestly, then if they're looking for the math, the books would be a good, they'd be a a definite advantage. Okay. Because then the charts are, they're very easy to look at. You can say, okay, I've got a kid who is not like pre-puberty or even puberty. They are a kid. My kid is moderately active and I can look at what should the math figure out to be, Mm -hmm. knowing how to determine what they are in kilograms versus their pound weight, all they have to do is look at the chart and do the math and say, okay, my kid is right here. It looks like we're in this range and my kid is still sitting high. So that's where then you have to take it a little further and you have to look at the data from what, if you're using a CGM, that's most advantageous. Obviously you have the most in terms of trends. You can say, we want to nudge this down. It looks like we're staying high no matter what right? Mm -hmm. We're not terribly fluxy up and down, but we've got some stability just at a higher level than we want to be. And what we've been using for boluses doesn't ever seem to get us to come back down, right? Um, So could it be basal? It could be. Could it also be that the bolus ratios just are not working heavy, heavy enough either? 
because remembering that our bolus doses, when we take them, are really what's supposed to get us back down to the target that we're aiming for. Okay. And so if the boluses aren't doing that, despite doing some basal testing, and when you're using, whether you're using MDI or you're using a pump, mm -hmm. you can do some base basal testing to evaluate stability. Because remembering that basal insulin is supposed to hold you where you are and not allow you to drop or rise more than about, let's call it 20-ish points. Yep. Um, so if that's the case and you're holding stable, maybe that's because that's where your bolus has left you off. Mm -hmm. I'm at, I, have two, I have two big questions. Yeah. These charts, are they like copyrighted information? Like if we posted them on my, like, I'd have Webs, to look at that. Right. On my web, would I think we be stealing from somebody if we put it because I, I could make a web page where this episode sits along with the chart and the math written out and the math written out. Yeah. I'd have to look in the um, I'd have to look in my books to see whether or not underneath the charts that are in both of the ones that I have mm -hmm. um, again, both John Walsh's and then um, Gary's book, yeah. both of them have charts. I don't know if they have um, a specific you, you know what Source I mean? Yeah. Noted. Like, is it yeah. something that is it something that Gary sat down and was like, I'm going to figure this out on my own, or is it something that the world no. just knew and he put it in there? No, you know that's I mean? definitely not. I mean, it's not like Gary or John okay. sat down and was like, these are definite used, they're used charts, right? This is what a peds, this is what an endo okay. may or could potentially look look at. So the math is a set math kind of rule. Okay. Um, well, then I'm so gonna... no, it's not. It's not their work. Okay. Well, then I'm going they to just put it down. I am going to make a web page that goes along with this episode. Then, sure. I, and I'm probably going to ask you for help. So, um, <laughs> I'm happy to help you. Here's my last question. Uh, I'm a person that I've had diabetes forever, and I'm hearing this episode and thinking, God, is my basal wrong? Do I just take my total daily insulin, go over what I've heard and and take a look and say like, oh, maybe my basal isn't right. Like, because, because it does happen, right? That people get sure. set up one way and then you just sort of, you, you, I think it's very common for people to get to the right answer the wrong way in a lot of facets of life. Diabetes is an example. So say yes. one day, 10 years ago, I know it sounds crazy, but 10 years ago, a doctor put you on a basal insulin and he gave you too little and your blood sugars were high, but you found ways around it with, you know, corrections or that. And eventually it just works for you. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean your settings are right. It means that you found a way to work with bad settings. Right. Right. So it's not, yes. it, it is worth going back and looking at a little bit. It is yeah. absolutely. Because as you said, you know, if, if you really think something is off, I mean, you can go back to what we've talked about in the pro tips, which are all about testing yeah, your right. insulin factors, right? Um, the first one being basal, because that's that's supposed to be your foundation. It's supposed to hold you really nice and stable if you just decided all day long today I'm going to fast or it is your fasting time of the year or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. You should be confident that your basal is doing a good job. And could your basal change? Absolutely. Based on some of the variables that we've already talked about, you've added in exercise or you've now got a really active job when you used to have a very sedentary job that could all factor in yep. and you may need a shift. Yeah. I'll just say it here again. If your basil is wrong, nothing else works and you really should go find the pro tip series and listen to it. Cause I think you would have a better idea of um, how to use your insulin. Right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Of course. Yes. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. Thanks also to Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 and that Dexcom G7 that's coming just any day here in the United States. It's already available in Europe. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. See if you're eligible for a free 10 day trial of the Dexcom G6. All right. I want to thank you for listening here, but after the music, I'm going to tell you about some other episodes that will help you with your basal insulin. Before 
Before I tell you about those other episodes, I want you to know that the chart that Jenny and I spoke about is at juiceboxpodcast.com forward slash basil. If you're new to diabetes, you should check out the Bold Beginnings series. That's available at juiceboxpodcast.com. Go to the top, click on Bold Beginnings, or by looking in your podcast player for Bold Beginnings. Use that search function. If you're not so new to everything, you may be looking for the Diabetes Pro Tip series. These are, again, available in your audio app, whichever, wherever you're listening right now, or at juiceboxpodcast.com. But if you just want to drill down on basal insulin, find episode 237. It's all about basal, and it's part of the Pro Tip series. If all this is too confusing, just go to Google and type in juicebox, one word, podcast, basil, and all this will come back in return. On top of all that, there are lists of all the series available in the private Facebook group in the Featured tab. So that's juiceboxpodcast.com in the private Facebook group under the Featured tab or in any audio app that you want to listen in. This information is here for you. I hope you get your basil set well. It is really the core of your diabetes care. And don't forget to go to episode 821 and 822 to figure out insulin to carb ratio and insulin sensitivity factor. These three settings together, they're going to make a big difference for you. Last thing is, I just really can't recommend enough that you take the time to listen to the Diabetes Pro Tip series. If you're looking for stable A1Cs, less variability, overall greater health, the Diabetes Pro Tip series from the Juice Box Podcast will help you. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast.